Hey everyone, it's your math teacher Mr. Boyden here. Today we're going to be talking about transformations. Um, this is called 9-1. We've actually already learned about one transformation, and that was where we made the shapes bigger and smaller. Do you remember what that was called? That was a dilation. And so that is a change in size. What we're going to learn about today, though, is called a translation. And no, it's not switching from one language to another or anything like that. A translation is something you've done all the time. Like, think of the electric slide. Okay, here's you smiling because you're happy. Little eyes, little legs. And when you do the electric slide, it'll say, slide to the left. Take it back now, y'all. And you take it back. So you end up moving your body to the left and you move back, but you're not turning at all. And that's exactly what a translation is. Sometimes we call that a shift. But it's important you realize, like when doing the electric slide, when you slide to the left and take it back now, y'all, you aren't turning your body at all. You're not flipping, you're not rotating, you're just moving your location in space. And so that's what we're going to see today. Um, that's what we're going to be doing. Let's do a little quick vocab refresher as we get going here. First thing, we need to be reminded uh, what a pre-image and an image are. Pre-image comes first, and that's what it's saying up here. It's the original. Um, guys, in class, what we talked about is pre meant before. So when I taught this in class, I just asked you, what do you think came first, pre-image or image? And you did a really nice job of noticing pre-meant before. So there you go. Pre-image comes first, image comes later. I want to remind you of one more thing. If this point is called point A, then what is this point called? Okay, we need to remember that's A prime, and that's how we write it. One more new bit of vocab here. Um, we need to know that congruence is the same thing roughly as an isometry. If we say that something is isometric or it's an isometry, um, it means it's not changing the size or the shape, and that is the exact same thing as what we know congruence to be. So take a look at each of these three things on the screen. Is each one isometric? First one, a lot of people said, no, it changes color, although one very smart young lady said, well, wait a minute, the definition doesn't say anything about the color. It just says same size, same shape, and it appears to be. Um, guys, this one is a flip. What that is actually called, we're gonna learn that in a later lesson, that's called a reflection. Okay, and someone pointed out this puzzle piece is just upside down. The back doesn't have any color on it. This one, it just slid. That's called a translation. And this one, it just turned, and we call that a rotation. So in conjunction with dilation, these are the four things we're learning about in this part of the unit. Okay, so this is kind of a little hint at what we're going to do next. So translation is today. Reflection and rotation will be in future videos. Okay, another quick check. Let's look at each of these and see if they're isometric and if the shapes are congruent. And we're going to say why or why not. Okay, look at the first one. Looks like it's the same. Looks like the two sides are the same size. So that's good. So that would be a big old yes. They are isometric. Down here, same triangle. They're just rotated. So that's a yes. What about this one? Circle, circle. They're different sizes. I'm going to say nope. Different sizes. Okay. And so, nope, those ones are not isometric or congruent. Let's get a little bit more formal now in what translations are. So, yes, we know translation is just when you slide the shape, like the electric slide. Oh, it should be called the electric translation. That would be fun, um, doing the electric translation. Cool. So, um, what way we're going to write them is like this. And this is called a rule or a translation rule. And so, all this is saying is you're going to take some point, and this is what you're going to do with it. You could think of this, and it's not technically what it means, but you could think of it as like the word becomes. Technically what it means is maps to, but we're going to deal with that a little bit later in math. So this point is going to become this point. Now to understand what this means, um, let's understand first of all on a graph, what is the x direction and what does that mean? Is x left to right or is x up and down? I hope you remember that x is left and right. So if you were doing plus 6, do you think that would mean moving to the right or moving to the left? The positive direction on the x-axis is this way. And so what this is saying right here is you're just going to slide your point to the right six or take six steps to the right if you're doing something like actually walking. What about over here? Okay, this says y. I remember y is up and down. That's the vertical direction. And so this is saying minus two. Do you think minus two means up or do you think it means down? Well, negative probably means down. So this is saying whatever you do, take that point, move it six to the right, move it two down. Okay, and that's what this says right here. Now down here at the bottom, maybe you want to pause the video and write down what you think this is saying to you. Take the point and do what to it? Unpause when you're ready. 
Okay, spoiler alert, here comes your answer. Okay, this is x, that means left and right. Minus means left, and so this is sliding to the left by three. Here is the next one, this is y, y is vertical, that's a plus, so that means up. So we're gonna slide left three and up two. So like, slide to the left, take it forward now, y'all. Now here's the trick for using this, because we actually are applying it to the point. So here's all we do. We're just gonna fill in those numbers. Because remember, these coordinates go x, x, y. So I'm gonna put in one comma three, so what all this is saying, and remember, it becomes, one three becomes, and I'm just gonna keep plugging in the numbers, x is one, so it becomes one minus three, comma, and three plus two, and we need to simplify, so it becomes one minus three, that's negative two, and three plus two, that's five. So the point one comma three becomes the point negative two, comma, Five. Think about that. That is sliding three to the left. So one gets slid to the left three into negative land. And the three gets slid up two. Three plus two is five. Okay, so that's how they look that way. Now let's see what happens when we take a visual approach. In order to understand this visually, let's graph these points. First thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to put my axis down on here. Whoa, redo. My handwriting with this new drawing pad is not very good yet, so please uh, bear with me on that. Let's see if I can do a little better this time. Hopefully I can. So I'm pretty good horizontal. Can I draw the vertical? Uh, better, but not great. Okay, but you know what? It's going to be good enough for us to understand this and to gain understanding from it. Okay, so three to the right, up seven. So one, two, three to the right, up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's my first point. And then five, negative two. So one, two, three, four, five, down one, two. There's my point, and then I'm going to connect the dots. Okay, and again, guys, my handwriting is not perfect, but that's okay, okay? I'm still able to demonstrate understanding and to earn understanding from it. Now we have to come back here and figure out what the heck this means, okay? So this negative eight, and you probably do want to pause the video here and try this. Does this negative eight say to move left, right, up, or down? It's X, so that's left and right, minus, so that is left. And this Y minus two, Y and minus means we're moving down. So it's as easy as this. All I do is I take this point and I count to the left eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Down one, two, one, two. And I'm gonna put a point. And then over here, count to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Down two. Connect the dots. Okay, so there I go. One thing I noticed right away is that these are parallel. Um, do you think that would always happen if we did a translation? Pause the video and think about that for a second. If you think about what a translation is, all it says is we're shifting it to the left, shifting to the right. Remember in the electric slide example in the very beginning, when you slide to the left and take it back now, y'all, your body isn't rotating left or right. You're still facing the same direction. Since this is not a rotation, but it is a translation, yes, these will always be parallel. Okay. This would be a really normal question to see on a test. Um, it's very similar to what we just did, except this time it's a triangle. So let's graph that triangle. Okay, make sure you pause the video and you're actually drawing this with me. Oops, redo. Make sure you actually draw with me because um, you want your notes to look really, really nice on this. Okay, and let's do some graphing. Okay, negative three, four, so left one, two, three, down, oops, up, one, two, three, four. Okay, and negative one, two, so left one, up two, and left two, down one. So here's my triangle. Okay, awesome. And I'm gonna make the points a little bigger so they stand out. Now we're gonna apply the translation. So remember, pause, you're practicing here as you work, and as you're taking notes, what direction does this mean right here? X plus six, that means left, right, up, or down. That means right. Y plus three, what does that mean? That means up, because it's Y and it's plus. So I'm going to move each point one at a time. It's like doing three different questions. Each point, I'm going to move six to the right and up three. So here I go. One, two, three, four, five, six, up one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. Okay, and we better check it. Better be the same triangle. If it's not the same triangle, we've made a mistake. Let's see, does that look like the same triangle? Sure it does, it just shifted right and up. Okay, and again, quick check. If that point is called A, what's this one called? A prime B, B prime C, C prime.
Now let's do the same thing, but we're going to do it in reverse order. In the last example, we were given the rule and we were asked to create the picture. This time, we're given the picture and we're asked to create the rule. And so the rule automatically is going to look something like this. X, Y, right arrow, and then some stuff over here. And it's going to have an X and it's going to have a Y. We just have to describe which direction we moved. So it says ABC becomes or is mapped onto A prime, B prime, C prime. So first thing we have to figure out is which shape came first, the shape on the left, or did the shape on the right come first? It's definitely this one. And how can we tell? Because that says prime. Prime means it came later. So we're going to try to figure out how did this point get moved down to this point? So let's see. It looks like it had to go down one. Okay, pause. I'm going to write this. It went down one. Is that Y or is that X? Up and down is Y. And so that's minus one. And then it looks like it maybe moved to the right as well. Let's see, it counted one, two, three, four, five, six. Move six to the right. Okay, six, right. And I could write out the word right or put an arrow. I'm just writing down some things to make sure I understand what's going on. Then up here, is that going to be a plus or a minus? It looks like plus because to the right is the positive direction. And y'all, that's all it is. Um, this is a really normal test style question. And with a little bit of practice, you're going to be really successful in these. Here's another common type of question that we would be asked about translations. And they're going to give us two translations, um, each of them different. So write the two as a single rule. So before I even worry about what the question's asking, they said write a rule. And so I'm going to write out the sort of the bones or the skeleton of my rule. And I know a rule always has x, y, and it always has parentheses. And it's going to have an x, and it's going to have a y, and it's going to have a comma. So that I already know. Now let's bookmark this for just a second, and I want to give you a different example. An example of something I do every day. Every day, I wake up at my house, and here's my house. And it's got a little door. Okay, and there I live. And every day, I go to school. And so one way that I can do that is I can go south for about 15 blocks. And then I can go east about five blocks. And then now I'm at school. So let's write that as a translation, because really I'm translating my body. I'm waking up. I'm not going to teach from where I sleep. So I'm going to wake up. I'm going to translate my body to school. So um, first rule, x, y. All right, which number goes with x? Does the 5 go with x or does the 15 go with x? The motion of my pen should give it away. This is going left and right. Left and right is the x. So that's x plus 5. And then that's y. And what's y doing? y is going down. So that's going to be minus 15. Then sometimes <clears throat> after school, I like to go to the store before I go home. And when I go to the store, I have to go south some more because that's where the stores are that I like to go to compared to our school. And so I go south about another six blocks and I go west about two blocks. And then I'm at the store. So let's write that as a vector as well. Or not a vector, excuse me, as a translation rule. So x, y becomes x, and it looks like we're going left 2, so minus 2. And we're going down 6, so y minus 6. And so now I have my two rules. And here's the question that we want to try to answer. If I wanted to go from my house to the store without stopping at school first, like let's say it's Saturday, I don't want to have to go to school before I go to the store. I just want to go to the store and get some food. So how do I get directly from my house to the store? So I could do all these things, but I don't need to go five east and then two left. I'm sort of backtracking. Really, how far east do I have to go? Okay, some of you will be able to look at this and say, oh yeah, that's three. So here's how we'd figure it out with the map. All we have to do is add these together. And I mean like literally elementary school style addition. So we're going to do five plus negative two. And that would be, oop, I need an arrow though. And then that would be three and it's positive three. And then I went down 15, down six more. For some of you, that's really intuitive. That's down 21. But look at this. Negative 15 plus negative 6 is negative 21. So I'm going to write y minus 21. So what we've done is we've taken our two rules and we've written them down as one rule. Now, that's exactly what the prompt is. I kind of like to think of it this way as like directions to get to different places. The direct way to get to the store from my house is to go three blocks east and 21 blocks south. That's a lot less work than 15, 5, 6, and 2. I just go, oh, 3 and then 21. 
that's easier to think about. So that's why we would maybe want to do this in a real situation. Now, with that said, let's answer these questions. It is as easy as this. You're just going to slap a line on here, and we're going to do some addition. So check it out, y'all. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And then 1 plus 4 is 5. Boom, done. Let's do the next one. X, Y becomes... And here we go. 1 plus 3, or 1.3... Plus 1.2, that would be x plus 2.5. And then what the heck is going on here? Notice there's no number by y. What does that mean? So like if there's a plus 1, that means up 1. If there's a plus 4, that means up 4. How much up is this? It's none at all. It actually means the same thing as this. Notice how plus 0 doesn't actually do anything. It means don't move left and right at all. This says don't move up and down at all. And then move down 4.7. So when we add 0 and 4.7, we get 4.7. And it's negative because that's negative. And we are done. I hope you've enjoyed this video on translations, and I will see you back next time. Bye!